Jim, if I may go ahead and start and just share it with you a little bit here. Over the past many years of ministry, um, yeah. man, I know. the Lord would give me um, dreams or visions. In the earlier days, it was more dreams. In my 40s and 50s, it was more visions. And then it went back to dreams because it said young men would see visions and old men would dream dreams. I'm, I'm <laughs> dreaming more now, so I guess that tells you I'm older. <laughs> I tease people about that. But I asked the Lord one True. day, I said, tell me why that the young men must see the visions and the old men are allowed to see the dreams. And he said, well, when you have served me a long time, you learn the Bible and you learn symbolism. So you don't need a vision. You can interpret the dream. Younger men, however, do not have the experience. And so for God to speak to them, many times it must be in a three, full color, three dimensional, all five senses are aware of vision because then they know it was from the Lord. I can't tell you how many young ministers have said, well, well Perry, I had, a, I had a real strange dream and they don't know how to interpret it. They go to an older man to get the interpretation. However, if that young man says, I had, I had my eyes closed and I went into a complete vision, he knows it comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the reason why you have young with the vision and older with the dream. Mm -hmm. The second thing I'd like to share is that uh, I was going to bring with me, and I had it right on my desk, and honestly, I was gone a week with my wife mm -hmm. and got back and didn't bring it. I was going to bring the original papers oh. that my father had written on. Oh, wow. And um, wow. we kept journals. Now, his was mostly on pieces of paper. He would write it, and he'd fold it, and he'd give it to me, or he'd keep it, and then after his death, I would find it. The ones that I dealt with are in a brown leather journal, and I was going to bring it just to show people that, mm. yeah, they, this is where it originated. Yes. Then there would be times when the Lord would show me something and I would have an artist to draw it out. Mm -hmm. um, two very specific things I saw, and we can talk about this later if you want, or we can go to different areas. Right. Five years before 9-11 ever happened, mm -hmm. I was in Brooksville, Florida at the Assembly of God Church. It may have a different name now, maybe called The Dome, with Pastor David Garcia. And we were staying at a couple's house, and it was with myself, and it was Don Chanel, who at that time was playing the bass for Benny Hinn because I would always never travel by myself. If my wife could not go, there's always a, a, another brother. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie's with me, for example, today. He's been with me 34 years. That travels with me. Don't ever go by myself. Right. But we were both staying in the house. At 3 in the afternoon after eating dinner, we were fellowshipping, and I got so tired. It's like you had hit me with a hammer. Mm -hmm. And it's like... All of a sudden, I'm just like, whoa. So I said, guys, I've got to lay down before service. I have a Dakes Bible. You know what those oh, are. Oh, yes. Yes. And I just literally opened my Bible to read and was so, my eyes were so heavy, I could not read. I laid, folded the Bible and put my head on it. And I'm telling you, I did not go to sleep. It was two minutes. And I was literally, just like I'm looking at the people here, everything was in full color, walking up a road. Two sidewalks, a left one and a right one. I was on the left one. Now, the left side, if you go to Job, is the side of trouble. Because mm -hmm. Job said, I'm on the left hand of God where he doth work. Right is always favor. And remember that. Mm. But the left okay. side, you know, there's, there's negative commandments that were the left side, mm -hmm. and there's positive, which are the right side. All this is the, gets into light. The light was on the right side. The darkness was on the left. So I'm on the left sidewalk. So in, the, in this vision, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to interpret what's happening. There were red brick homes on either side. And then there's this giant wall, concrete wall. And I was able to climb above it. And when I climbed above the wall, and we have a picture here that I want to show you to explain what I saw. Yeah. There's the drawing that was made in 1999. Now, this was not made after 9-11. Mm -hmm. When I got to the wall, I saw a square, a black square in the sky. And I thought, boy, that's a weird-looking cloud. But when I climbed up, it was the top of the, what looked like the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And it was completely shrouded in black. Then, to the left, a gray tornado, and it had sparks and dust, and there was stuff coming off of it, started spinning. Then another, another, another. There were five. The one on the far left in the picture 
started coming down a cornfield and took out a row of corn. Now, all this is symbolic, and I'll explain it, yeah. because this sets the pace for the other things we want to share. Right. Uh, I remember that, that we, they were going to come one after the other, after the other, after the other. And I literally turned and started running barefoot. Now, when you are barefoot in a dream, it means you're not prepared for what's coming. So I knew by symbolism mm -hmm. that this is something we're not ready for. No one is ready for, prepared for this. And when I got to the bottom of the hill, I screamed out twice. We have to get to the cleft of the rock. Then I said it again. We have to get to the cleft of the rock, all right? Mm -hmm. Which indicated to me that there would be two major events that they would not necessarily be connected, which the people of God were going to have to hide themselves into the presence of God and really get into prayer mm -hmm. to, to, to go through it. Yeah. All right. Well, you got to understand, I'm coming out of this dream, and I knock on the door of where Don is. I said, Don, I've just had this, not dream, I'm sorry, vision. This was a vision. I said, I've had a vision. He's, what do you think it means? I said, I don't know. Now, this is the month of June in 1996. I want you to listen to me. Five years before. Five years before, but we found out by someone that worked in the FBI that, that was researching 9-11 that Muhammad Atta and one of these other terrorists was 30 miles from where I had the vision at a flight school talking about learning how to land planes or fly planes. Right in Florida. Yeah. It was there in Florida. And a Jewish friend of mine met both of them and thought it was suspicious because they were saying, well, we just want to learn. How, we don't want to learn how to land. Well, we just want to learn how to take off in one. And that should have been a trigger right there. Yeah. So in other words, God gives me this vision while the terrorists that are going to do it five years later are in the state of Florida, 30 minutes to 40 minutes from where I'm, I'm at. Now, God, understand, we knew none of this. Till after the fact. I got up in church that night and I told him, I said, there's coming an attack on the Trade Center. I believe it's the Trade Center. And I don't know what it is, but when the gray, see, look at this. Now watch mm -hmm. the gray. Yeah. When the building, when the plane hit, mm -hmm. there comes the gray. When the second plane hit, there come more gray. When the building collapsed, there was more gray. When another building collapsed, there, so these are the that's the gray. Remember, remember, it looked like yeah. a tornado coming down the street. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I had this, and this is five years later on 9-11. I'm, I'm actually going to a meeting in Pigeon Forge, and I'm watching this on TV. And these pictures, and, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm extending this, but I want people to get the detail of this. These pictures made in 1999, mm -hmm. I pulled them out five days before out of my office and laid them in the shipping room. And told one of my workers, Mel Kobach, I said, terrorists are going to hit the Trade Center. Mm. I said, this was five years ago, and I get so tired of trying to figure out what it is. Yeah. Well, to make a long story short, and we're going to abbreviate it, the wall was Wall Street. The World Trade Center, I didn't see two, because if you stand at a certain angle, they look as one. Mm -hmm. The black cloud was where the plane went in, and all the black smoke went to the top first, mm -hmm. then the collapse, of course, and there were both of them. But the five, this is what got, got really strange. If you take Trade Center 1 and 2 and remove them, mm -hmm. then the other buildings that were affected by the, the gray tornadoes and by the shock were Trade Center 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. There it is. Then the, the grain in the Bible is the economy. So what it was showing me was with the collapse of those buildings and the storms coming, it was going to affect that, that, that business, that business, that business, and it was going to take out. And there were, I don't know how many millions of jobs lost as a result oh because it wasn't yeah. just the Trade Center. No. It was the hotels there. It was, the, it was everything. Yeah. Millions of jobs lost. And so that was the, the, the most, in, in another, let's put that other picture you had of the people praying because yeah. this, this followed six months later, mm -hmm. which would have been, uh, probably around 1997. I don't have the exact date because, you know, I just, I just did these drawings in 1999. Now, that's me with that black hair <laughs> looking. Mm -hmm. And the artist, J. Michael Leonard, who is a great artist, he drew this out. And I said, J. Michael, I'm in a building. It's a church. And it's got kind of big stones. It's, it's, it's different. Uh, and then I look, and there is no door. Why is there no door? Because in the church, Jesus is the door. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a physical door. He is the entrance. These five tornadoes are flying by. There's computer paper. There's, and you can, I had him even draw it on the drawing. Computer paper, pop cans, 
It just looks like you tore an office up is what it looked like. And it drops it on a cemetery. All this stuff is falling in a cemetery. Inside are Asians, mm -hmm. African Americans, and some of them yeah. would be people from Jamaica and Haiti. Because, you, you know, I could tell that they were, they were uh, our black citizens from different parts of the city. Mm -hmm. And then there was, an, there was an Hispanic group, Asian group, and uh, African American group. And everybody was with their ethnic group praying. I mean, uh, the Hispanic people, that's them in the corner. And I mean, they were, they were just shaking and praying. And in the African American, so these were Christians that ran into a church. Now, I did not know this till when 9-11 happened, that some of the first, not, they weren't first responders, but they came up a few weeks later to help, you know, the cleanup and so on. I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, preaching in uh, the month of September, I believe it was. It, 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 anyway, it was about that time, if I remember. But I was in Baton Rouge, and a man that had been to Ground Zero said to me, oh, I know where that church is. And he showed me pictures of the church, and he said, this is where people ran into. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's a cemetery outside that church, and all that stuff was dumped in this, you know, mm -hmm. the papers and yeah. stuff were dumped in the cemetery. Yeah. Now, remember this. I lived over almost five years, and I had no clue what that meant. I knew it. And, but I did do this, and I, would, I wish Jim and Charlie, we may want to do this one day, but we have a clip where I am with my dad, and I'm telling him about a vision I've had, mm -hmm. and I said, the terrorists are going to attack the Trade Center. Now, when it happened, the, immediately I received a call from uh, Marcus on Daystar mm -hmm. because Marcus had shown these pictures. Mm -hmm. I, I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and was on five hours live, and we just discussed this whole thing out of Atlanta Station. And then people who remembered seeing it and me talking about it then began to talk about it. Now, I want to I say something to everybody watching me. And I want you to listen to what I'm about to say because I want to sidetrack. We're going to go on a lot of rabbit trails, I have a feeling. That's what I call them. When, when myself or someone like Jim Baker who carries a weight of seeing or knowing things and you don't see it happen at the time, you get labeled doom and gloomer. You get labeled false prophet. Uh, you get labeled negative preacher. You get labeled prophetic heretic until it happens. Then you're the hero. Oh, yeah, Brother Stone said that. Yeah, I remember Jim talking about that. And the very people who dogged you down then say, oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah, yeah, he's a good man. <laughs> it's like... Why didn't you say that four years ago, you know, yeah. when, when I'm Scottish? But see, that's, you understand, that's nothing new. Because when Jeremiah told Jerusalem, he said, you know, you guys, the priesthood is messed up. The people are messed up. The high priest is messed up. You're all messed up. And God's telling me he's going to take the hedge down and let the Babylonians come in. Well, when he, when he gave that warning, they didn't want to hear it. And let me tell you, Lori, why they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it because... Everybody was blessed. The, there was prosperity everywhere. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was no sign anything bad was about to happen. No. Yeah. Now, somewhere around 40 years later, Nebuchadnezzar comes into northern Israel. Then the second, second wave, he comes into Judea. Third wave, he hits Jerusalem. And guess who is not taken into captivity? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. That's right. He was allowed to live there. And if you know the story, he buried that scroll as a sign the Jews would come back. So the man who, the, the people who criticized him were the people who suffered. And the man who did the preaching and the teaching was preserved. Yeah. Now think about that for yeah. a moment. Yeah. So it's very important that you do not view anything warning as some kind of negative information mm -hmm. or something. Because let me just say it, I've said it a thousand times in my lifetime. God's Holy Spirit does nothing to scare you but to prepare you. That's right. Yeah. However, if you go and read about Noah, it said Noah, who was warned of God of things to come by fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his family. Now, that doesn't mean there's different levels of fear. The spirit of fear, God didn't give that to you. But that means the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Right. The fear of God to, oh, he's given me a warning. We need to do something about it. Let's pray about it and see what to do. And so this is really important that you understand that there is a ungodly fear. Mm -hmm. 
right. which is the spirit of fear to make you afraid and timid and, you know, lock yourself up, not want to go out. That's not from the Lord. That's God right. wants you to have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, okay? Yes. Even, while, even during these times. Right. 